Hey, I'm Louise, and I wanted to tell you how I was stuck on a roller coaster for three days. And that was just the beginning of my problems. It all started when a birthday surprise went really wrong. If you didn't like it, then why did you accept it? But anyways, yo, what's up, guys? It's your friendly neighborhood retard here. So today we'll be looking at a, I don't even know, it's a story time thing. And uh, it's about a old lady getting stuck on a roller coaster. And I guess she was so stupid that uh, she couldn't really escape. But apparently she had a shirt off too, so uh, all the boys here can enjoy all that show. And I'm uh, sorry for the area, but uh, too bad. Anyways, but for real, I really don't know what type of idiot, like, it takes the shirt off while being stuck in the so you're stuck, you're not in castaway. Anyways, let me go back to the video before one of you guys murder me. Bye. For now. It was the day of my birthday, and I thought my friends Becky and Dan knew me well enough to know what I'm into. Shopping, spas, and selfies. They told me that we were going on a day out as a surprise, and I was so excited. Until we got there. They had taken me to a lousy theme park. I was so annoyed. Did they think I was a kid? We lined up for over an hour to be among the first people to ride their new roller coaster. It was supposed to be one of the scariest roller coasters in the world, but I hate them. I think they're really scary and they really mess up my hair, but I didn't want to tell them that. I was really nervous and then it got worse. We were allocated the front seats. My friends were so excited as they are the best ones, but that just made me even more scared. I felt sick as the ride started. It went so fast and there were so many loops. Then, as we went upside down on the biggest loop yet, the ride suddenly stopped. It happened so quickly that the ride jolted and it really hurt my head and neck. We were left hanging upside down. This wasn't part of the ride, surely? I realized quickly that it wasn't. Soon, everyone was screaming. It was like a nightmare. Why wasn't the ride starting again? I began to panic. Never in my life had I screamed so loud. I was so terrified. On my left, my friend Becky was uncontrollably crying. On my right, I saw Dan unconscious, and he had blood coming from his nose. I shouted at him until he opened his eyes. Everyone behind me was crying, screaming, begging for help. I realized there must be about 50 people on this ride, and they were all stuck like us. The sounds were terrifying. I got out my phone and tried to call for help, but I had no signal. I must have passed out for a while, as when we woke up, I realized that I had dropped my phone and it was smashed on the ground below. I was so annoyed, especially as I never bother with insurance. Then I saw something that made me even more frightened. There was smoke coming off the train we were on. It looked like it was going to catch on fire. I looked around. I couldn't even see a fire engine. Then I heard shouting. I thought it was a rescue party, but it wasn't. It was the press. There were reporters and film crews everywhere below filming us and taking photos. I tried to shout at them to help us, but they couldn't hear me. I don't know how long we were upside down, but it felt like hours. Then, suddenly, the train moved. It went forward until we were the right way up, at the top of a loop looking downwards. But then the ride stopped again. I couldn't believe it! Now I was upright, I felt my blood rushing out of my head and back through my body. Becky had stopped crying, and I was so angry at her. I started shouting at her, telling her how I hadn't even wanted to go on this roller coaster in the first place, as I was worried something was going to go wrong. And I was right! Then she got angry at me and told me that she thought it was my idea to go to the theme park. I couldn't believe it. Becky was such a liar, like I would have wanted to come to this stupid theme park. Then Dan woke up. He looked really rough and his voice croaked. He admitted that it was his idea to go to the theme park. He knew that neither of us wanted to go. He even knew I had a fear of heights. So he told Becky that it was my idea and told me it was Becky's. Unbelievable! And it didn't stop there. I got so mad that I confessed to Dan that I was the one who spread rumors that he still pees his bed. Which is, by the way, true! Becky then told me she kissed my BF in third grade and our fight kept going. I didn't want to talk to either of them ever again. After 10 hours had passed, I heard a really loud noise like a helicopter above my head. I looked up and saw it wasn't a helicopter. It was a drone. It was carrying three boxes. It lowered down until it was close to us and I took the boxes. 
I handed one to Dan and one to Becky without speaking to them. I opened mine up. Inside of it was a cheeseburger and fries. I heard Becky sounding really excited and starting to eat. Dan had passed out again and dropped his on the floor. But I was not impressed. I was on a cleanse and I didn't want to eat anything this unhealthy. They could have asked me what I wanted. I was about to throw my box onto the ground when I realized there was something else in the box. I heard a ringing sound. It was a mobile phone. I answered it. It was someone from the theme park. They told me that we were going to be rescued, but it might take a while. The ride designer was on a Caribbean cruise and he wasn't answering his phone. They didn't know how to fix the problem without speaking to him. It was starting to get dark now. I told the man on the phone that he had better get me down soon. If not, I was going to sue. I demanded that he get me some healthy food and a blanket. I was starting to get cold. I must have fallen asleep as when I woke up, the sun was starting to rise. I was cold and tired and weak. I looked at Dan. He wasn't moving. He looked dead. I couldn't believe that the last time I had spoke to him was to get angry at him. It wasn't his fault the ride went wrong. Then I thought of something terrible. Suddenly, a projectile vomited everywhere. The crowd of camera crew who had been there for two days were getting covered in my sick. They ran for cover. As scared as I was, I was also pleased that it hit them. Then I realized I was covered in sick too. It was so gross, and as the sun got higher in the sky, it started to dry and really smell. I had no choice, but I had to take my top off. It took me loads of struggling, but I eventually got it off. I dropped it to the ground below. It was just in my jeans and bra, but you know what? I didn't care. It's not like I had boobs anyway. I was as flat-chested as a boy. At least I couldn't smell the sick anymore. That night, I had a terrible night's sleep, and I was so cold. Then I heard the sound of a phone ringing. I was confused for a minute. My phone was gone, so where was it coming from? Then I realized it was the phone that had been in the box. I answered it. It was a journalist who wanted to interview me about the accident. They wanted to know if I would talk to them. I told them they could speak to me, but only if they would pay me what I wanted, and I asked for a lot of money. He said he would see what he could do. I stayed up all night waiting for him to call me back, but he never did. If that wasn't bad enough, that stupid drone couldn't bring us any more food. It was apparently too windy for it to fly. The next morning, when I woke up, I heard something loud. It was the sound of the roller coaster going back on. I had never been so pleased. The train started moving again. It went really fast as it finished its course. Finally, it took us to the exit and came to a stop. As soon as the restraint lifted, I got up. I was really wobbly. A paramedic came running over to me and wrapped the blanket around me, but I was okay. I didn't have a chance to get upset though, as by then my parents had come running over to me. They were so happy to see me, and for once I was happy to see them. They gave me a drink and some food. Then I remembered something. I felt in my jean pockets. It wasn't there. I had taken a roll of banknotes with me to the theme park. I hadn't known that the theme park was my birthday surprise. I was hoping for a day out shopping, so I had come prepared with all of my savings. Now, they were gone. Then I remembered. They were in the pocket of the top that I had taken off when it got covered in sick. Even though I was really weak, I knew I needed to look for that money. I ran outside and looked around for my top on the floor, but of course, it was gone. I was so upset about the money, but no one seemed to care. I was taken to the hospital to recover, but luckily I was okay. I was put on a drip to help pick up my energy, but I didn't mind. Becky was in the next bed. She wasn't so lucky. She needed lots of injections and tablets to get her better, but she was always the dramatic one. Once my parents had bought me a new phone, I saw that the accident was on the news. Not just in this country, but all around the world. Then I couldn't believe what I saw. There were pictures of me all over the news and they were terrible. There was even a film of me being sick into the crowd below and I was just wearing my jeans and bra. When I got out of the hospital, all of my friends thought it was some big joke. They didn't think about how scary it was to have gone through all this. They even started calling me horrible names. Spewy Louie and Flatty for being flat chested. They thought they were being so funny. My mom and dad were so angry about what happened at the theme park that they decided to sue. I had to stand up in court and talk about what happened. Our lawyer encouraged me to talk about how scared I was and how awful it must have been to see my friend die. But I wanted to talk about the things that really affected me. 
I told them that the food I was bought was horrible and that I wasn't happy that such bad pictures of me was used in the press. Later on, the lawyer told me that my answers weren't that good. But it didn't matter. We won a lot of money anyway. A million dollars. I knew what I wanted to do with the money. I wanted to make sure that people knew who I really was. I didn't want to be known for the viral girl pukes on roller coaster in a crowd video. So I spent the money on myself. I had my teeth whitened and I had a boob job and butt lift and I paid for a couple of photo shoots with top photographers. Now I'm a well-known influencer and my friends don't call me Spewy Louie anymore. What did you think of my story? Please share your comments below and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more stories. That is the most basic white girl crap I've ever heard. No offense to white girls. But for real, like, you're telling me. You're basic. Like, shopping, um, I don't know, looking at stuff, you know, taking clothes from Macy's and then taking a picture in the dressing room, like, God, are you so basic? Why are you so basic? Please tell me. Why are you so basic? Anyways, um, back to the video, I guess, because, uh, this basic white girl cannot, uh, control herself, I guess, I don't really know. Uh, yeah. They told me that we were going on a day out as a surprise, and I was so excited. Until we got there. They had taken me to a lousy theme park. I was so annoyed. Did they think I was a kid? We lined up for over an hour. You see, this is why I don't mess with idiots. He's still a teenager. This is saying, oh, I'm, do I look like I'm a kid? Yes, you look like you're a kid, my god. Heck, you look like you're freaking... I don't know, I look like a freaking toddler. I can't really get a roast right now. But for real, they did be happy that you actually took it to the deep park. Sure, you got stuck on a dick for three days shirtless, but uh, still, uh, be thankful. You know, it's not Thanksgiving again. I'm already saying be thankful, you know. Because it was Thanksgiving, man. It's already November. It's like, you gotta be thankful, man. No matter what they say. You know, like, don't you guys agree? We lined up for over an hour to be among the first people to ride their new roller coaster. It was supposed to be one of the scariest roller coasters in the world, but I hate them. I think they're really scary, and they really mess up my hair. God, this girl is a degenerate. They take you to a theme park. They're having fun with you. And you're complaining about your hair? God, I could imagine you at school. Oh, wait. Um, sorry, Mr. Whatever your gala 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 name is. I don't think no. I can't play gym today. It'll mess up my hair. Like, what? Like, you tell me, every single Christmas, like, do you just ask for a hairbrush or something? Like, do you not want to just go out? Like, what do you do all day? Like, do you spend three hours doing your hair? God, like, please, please, kill me now, please. Anyways, let me get back to the video before you guys start killing me. You know, my wrist really hurts, but, uh, yeah, you know, let me get back to the video. I was really nervous, and then it got worse. We were allocated the front seats. My friends were so excited as they are the best ones, but that just made me even more scared. I felt sick as the ride started. It went so fast and there were so many loops. Then as we went upside down on the biggest loop yet, the ride suddenly stopped. It happened so quickly that the ride jolted and it really hurt my head and neck. We were left hanging upside down. This wasn't part of the ride, surely? I realized quickly that it wasn't. Soon, everyone was screaming. It was like a nightmare. Why wasn't the ride starting again? I be- Honestly, I don't have much to really say. I mean, you're sure, I guess? Um, it's kind of scary. Like, if I was stuck on a roller coaster, I'm pretty sure I'll be quaking. Like, I'm pretty sure somebody would need to put a diaper on me because I'll be freaking having diarrhea on my parents. Like, I'm pretty sure if I was stuck on a roller coaster, somebody would think I ate Taco Bell that morning. Anyways, I really don't feel bad for you because it's a fake story. But even if it was a real story, I'm pretty sure it would be a lot more scary. And you know what's funny too? Like, their friends are so excited, but it's like, dude. Like, <laughs> like you tell me you're just stuck upside down. Now, there's a lot of reasons. But, like, you're stuck upside down. And no security guard is there. Like, you tell me there's no security guard on the bottom that's staring at you, always trying to get help. Like, nobody's there. Let's never get see for ourselves. And, uh, risk, my risk still hurts, so, uh, let me get on back to the video. It was like a nightmare. Why wasn't the ride starting again? I began to panic. Never in my life had I screamed so loud. I was so terrified. On my left, my friend Becky was uncontrollably crying. On my right, I saw Dan unconscious, and he had blood coming from his nose. I shouted at him until he opened his eyes. 
Everyone behind me was crying, screaming, begging for help. I realized there must be about 50 people on this ride, and they were all stuck like us. The sounds were terrifying. I got out my phone and tried to call for help, but I had no signal. I must have passed out for a while, as when we woke up, I realized that I had dropped my phone and it was smashed on the ground below. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure everybody by now knows that this is uh, kind of fake. Mainly because, uh, how did you try to call for help, but your like, phone broke? Like, why didn't you just say phone broke and you couldn't call for help? It a lot easier to say. Anyways, I'm gonna just end it here because I'm tired of editing and my hand hurts. And it feels like it's gonna break off and I'll continue editing. I'm gonna be editing this thing for like three days now, so uh, pray, please kill me now. Anyways, I'm gonna just end it here. Long story short, I think all that happened is that she just got stuck. And for some reason, the security couldn't call freaking help. So, uh, they didn't really do much. You know, they just got stuck for three days and they left. So, I don't really think she got her top off. Because if she literally took off her top, I'm done. But, yeah. You guys can see it for yourself. There's not going to be a link because, uh, these degenerates don't really need a link. Anyways, uh, I'm just chill out for now. And, uh, I don't know. See you guys in the next video. So, bye. Peace. Please. Help me get not copyrighted. And I really don't know what to say. Bye guys, see you guys in the next retarded video.